Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is the consideration to elect board officers and committee appointments. Do I have a motion I, for the board chair? Yeah, I move we elect Susanna Mazel Hubs to be the board chair for the school board. Do we have a second? Second that. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Elizabeth, are you voting? Uh, okay, it's unanimous. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. All right, um, next is the election of uh, board co-vice chairs. This year we're doing it, uh, this year we're gonna do it different. We're gonna have two um, vice chairs so that one is getting trained and the next one is presumably moving into a uh, further leadership role. So may I have a motion please? Oh. Um, I move we elect Kimberly Carr and Heather Altenberg. May I have a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, any, any opposed? No, thank you. Okay, next, um, appointment of committees. Uh, we have uh, standing committees, which are include um, finance chair, policy chair, and also two members in policy. May I have a motion, please? I move that we elect Elizabeth Seifries as the finance chair with the full board membership as finance chair members, finance members. Thank you. And then, um, Kimberly, do you mind doing policy? Sure, I move that we nominate Hope Straw for policy chair and Laura Danino and Elizabeth Seifries as the other two members. Um, so may I? I second. Second, thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous, okay, thank you. Um, committee appointments, uh, PAS General Advisory Board. Um, I wonder if we just do a slate of these or should we do one by one? Maybe a slate. Maybe a slate, okay. So PAS uh, General Advisory Board, may I have Is a motion? Um, may I have a motion? Is it you? Yeah. I move we appoint Susanna Mazel hubs for the PAS General Advisory Board. Okay. Uh, student Wellness Committee, may I have a motion? Nasser? Uh, I have a motion that we, is it who is it? It's who is it? Heather and Laura. Heather, right? Yeah, Heather. And Laura. And Laura. Okay, thank you. Um, technology Steering Committee. Uh, Elizabeth, do you mind making that motion? You can't. I, I can. I can. But Oh, Elizabeth can't make the club. I Sorry. move to elect Elizabeth Cypress to Thank you, technology steering. <clears throat> okay. Elizabeth, how about transportation? I move we appoint um, Hope Straw to transportation appeals. In the hopes that she rises. <laughs> uh, buildings and grounds. Uh, Hope, do you mind? I move we appoint uh, Kimberly Carr to buildings and grounds committee. And then, um, Kimberly, do you mind doing uh, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation? She's it. I move we oh, appoint yes. uh, Kimberly Carr as Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation liaison. Great. I second all the nominations. <laughs> all those in favor? Great. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, and then, last, advisory committees. Um, May I have a motion for legislative liaison? Who did it? Who, Kimberly? 
I, who would do that? I move um, that we nominate Hope Straw for legislative liaison and Elizabeth Cypress as alternative. Thank you. And then I move we elect Nasser Shear as dropout prevention committee. Right, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then may I have someone make a motion for calendar academic year 19 and 20? Um, I move we appoint Heather Allender and Kimberly Carr to the calendar committee for the 2019 2020 academic year. Okay. Right. I, I second. Group second, thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Okay. All right. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. All right, next, uh, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, next, uh, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the school board minutes from the regular business meeting Tuesday, November 13th, 2018. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. And then next, we have comments from our student representatives. <clears throat> okay, so um, today we got back our PSAT scores, um, which is really helpful for students to kind of get a baseline of what their range of score will be when they actually take the SAT. And we're fortunate enough to have Khan Academy be able to link to your scores so they can give you information on what to get better at and can help you do modules and stuff like that to try to achieve a higher score. Um, so those came out today, so any student can do that. Um, no charge at all, so that's a pretty cool thing. And last Friday, the, senior, the seniors and juniors got to all go down to the auditorium to watch TEDx. And the feedback that I've heard from students and faculty has been really positive. Um, the speakers were really good, and we also had some really good student performers. So it was really cool to see people from the school perform and like show their talents. So all in all, it was a really, really good experience. And the TEDx Planning Committee has a thank you card for the school board um, to thank you for approving and making sure that TEDx happens again this past mm -hmm. year and hopefully again in the future. Oh, so you. you guys can pass that around. Mm -hmm. yes. It was really well done and I enjoyed the day tremendously. Loved the student performances. They're all, all awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you guys done I think that's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, there's right. not a ton going on right now. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, then we're moving on. Are there any comments from the public on agenda items? No. Okay. Next, we are moving on to presentations. So, do you want to introduce the what we're doing next, or I'll go up there? Sure. So we have some certificates um, to offer. We have some um, amazing students, as as we all know. Um, we have a girls class B cross country state champion. Uh, we have the soccer, the girls soccer class B state champions. Um, we have um, one, our wonderful coaches. Uh, we have um, a student and a coach who have received a special award uh, recently. So what we're going to do is um, Susanna's going to read the names and we'll all stand up. And um, if the students and coaches would come around the front, we'll shake your hands. Um, but we, we're so proud of you and we thank you so much for all the effort that you have put into excelling. All right, great. So first we have um, from the Class B Cross Country State Champion, Lila Gaudreau. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> Shake 
now we're moving on to um, Class B Girls Soccer State Champions. Um, the first one um, on our list is Grace Gillian. Grace was selected as a member of the Maine Sunday Telegram All-State team. The Portland Press Herald reported um, she, she, often, she often diffused attacks before opposing teams could m muster a decent shot. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so congratulations, Jesse. Um, <laughs> Next, um, girls soccer state champions, Tori McGrath. Presley Piscopo. Games, right? Okay, so can someone take it for Carly? Um, Olivia Cochran. <laughs> Zoe Preble. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do a group clap. Abby Agrandia. Drunk? It's my sister, I can take it. Oh. <laughs> Maggie Cochran.
Ali Gagne? Not here. Okay. Did I say it right? Penny Hedar? Claire McDonald? Basketball? <laughs> Mia Ramston? Song. Okay. Emily Supple. Okay. Riley Dahl. Graham Forsyth, who uh, was named Maine Sunday Telegraph by Maine Su Sunday Telegraph, the Coach of the Year. <laughs> it's pro probably a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Don Burke. Presentation from Susan Dana. And students. And students. What? Oh, and students, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Eight graders. I understand the display takes a while to warm up, so I want to at least get that started. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm Susan Dana, and I teach at the middle school. And I just wanted to present the results of a CEF grant that we wrote last year. Um, first of all, I want to introduce my students. They are in eighth grade this year, um, but they were my seventh grade students last year, so they were part of the uh, the project. Um, so I've got, uh, let me see, not everybody came. Let me see. So I've got Philip Koop. 
Nate Patterson, Luke Mello, Juliet Moore, and um, Charlotte DeGeorge. So they're going to be talking a little bit about what we did. Um, my CEF grant was actually entitled, so what we're going to do is I'm going to speak a little bit, and the students are going to speak, then I'll kind of wrap it up. We'll try to keep it rel relatively short. Um, so uh, my grant was entitled Global Collaboration CEMS Learns with the World. And the goals of the grant were to, actually let me back up just a little bit because I wrote the grant, the, the overall, just a brief description. The idea was for students and, and me to, uh, will plan, organize, and implement collaborative projects and exchanges with students in Spain. And I made these connections in Spain through some professional development I've done. Um, so I also want to put in a plug for PD, um, going through programs in the embassy in Spain, taking graduate courses and I've just made a lot of connections there. So this is actually a direct result of a 2016 professional development course that I took, just the connections that I made there. Um, but we decided to uh, focus on the, the United Nations Global Goals, which the students are going to talk about. We're actually on the map, and actually Juliet's logo, if you click through here, I will share this with the board, but Juliet's logo is now on, on the map of the United Nations Global Goals, and what we um, will talk, they'll be talking about the logos as well. But so at least CMS is now in the United Nations website and uh, collaborating with the world. So the, the two goals were, uh, one, to have students use their language skills in a real world setting, as opposed to just in the classroom. And just trying to expand the classroom beyond 04107. Um, it, some students here are fortunate in being able to travel, but others aren't. So now with all the technology that we have, and every student has a, a, a beautiful MacBook, so it makes it really easy to collaborate with, with students around the world. Um, so the one with, was the language, have students use your language skills. And then the other one was to have students improve their use of tech skills by creating movies. Um, they learn how to animate with Keynote, and then put, it, put that into iMovie and green screen and posting on social media. I know we hear a lot of negative things about social media, but if we look at teens, that's often how they connect, and it was actually a really great way through Twitter and Instagram, made some connections that way. Um, so I guess that's mostly just kind of kind of the overview. So the, the premise of the goal uh, of the project was to work with the school in Tafaya, which is in northern Spain, if you're familiar with the region of Rioja, up in, in uh, fairly close to, to France. Um, but they were uh, picked a UN Global Goal, and they'll talk about that, and then we ended up making um, reusable grocery bags. So that's where the SEEF grant came in, and they funded the, the printing of these reusable grocery bags, which we're going to be hopefully just not hopefully, we will be distributing throughout the community. So maybe I'll have, let's see who's first, Charlotte and Julia. Just step aside. Hi. Global Goals, a set of 17 goals to be completed by 2030, were created by the UN as a way to help our planet. We helped in as many ways as possible for our class by learning and spreading awareness for them. We communicated with a school from Tafaya, Spain, who had the same ideas about us about helping our planet. We designed reusable bags and so much more. We prepared for our project by learning vocabulary associated with the goals, such as reciclar, reducir, and reusar. We focused on two main goals, responsible consumption and production, as well as life below water. We watched videos on these things and were encouraged to learn more independently. I remember watching a video of a turtle with a plastic straw up its nose. It made me realize how I was overlooking my effect on the environment and how something as small as a plastic straw can kill or hurt an animal. We also each did a dizzy goal where we had to spin around a soccer ball 13 times and run and kick another ball into a goal. We had a lot of fun while raising awareness for the goals at the same time. Uh, how we created our design. Um, one option was to use a website called Canva and other students could have just hand drew them themselves. Students also came up with a phrase that went with their recycling design. For example, on our bags, it says, no plastico es fantastica. These, these designs help give kids a fun but important example of what plastic is doing to the environment. At the end of the school year, the designs were voted on by the seventh graders, and that's how it was decided which designs and phrases would be put on the bags. We did some work with the school called Tafaya that is in Spain. With them, we exchanged letters that we wrote in Spanish, and they wrote letters in English. We also Skyped and learned some of their traditions. And the eighth grade graders last year used a collaboration app called Padlet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
so actually, so we have the bags. I don't want to. Uh, Uh, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with Canva, but we also really w tried to work on digital citizenship where we're using original creations. We're not just taking an image off internet. We're, so Canva is really good because they designed, as you look through the, um, I tried to scoot through here, the, uh, the logos, those, those are all original designs uh, by the students. And uh, this is the one that is on the UN, the Global Goals website. If you click all the way through, you've got to go through. I think I was showing it up earlier. I don't think I'll, I won't take time to do it now, but um, right here. So there, it shows up here. There are 782,761 schools, students participating. So if you, if you click through, uh, Cape Elizabeth is on the map, which is cool. So, um, but... Uh, Oh, so, so the digital citizenship, I think, was also very important to, to stress in terms of using the, the technology and having uh, original designs. I don't know if we've got time. There's our, we, we had, they came up with hashtags in Spanish. So they, had to learn, they actually learned a lot of vocabulary. This was a year long. We started, well, not, we started in January, I guess. But um, so we've got, this was our, the Dizzy Goals was actually started in 2015, but as a way to encourage, they have, uh, to encourage the adoption of the, um, the United Nations Global Goals. And uh, we did this actually. Actually, it was the, the Thursday before April vacation. And believe it or not, we didn't have snow then. But And then students um, edited their own videos, and they did whatever, fast motion and sl slowing down. and um, So they're pretty funny. Uh, and then these are the hashtags that they came up with. So these are actually the hashtags that are on. Uh, this is one of the, the bags, which we're going to give one to everybody in the school board. Um, we're going to send 10, uh, 10 or 20 of these to Spain. The one thing that didn't, uh, any project, not everything is realized the way one anticipates so just because of scheduling and whatever, the, the students from Spain did not design a logo. The idea was one side was going to be from the students from Spain and one side from the students from Cape, but it just didn't work out. But we just decided to go ahead and get the bags printed because we'd done everything else up to that point. And actually, I'm still collaborating. Actually, just I'm emailing back and forth with Codina, the teacher in Tafaya, um, right now, at today. So we're starting with this year's seventh graders with another, another project. Um, so anyway, so these are hashtags, so hopefully they'll come out. But I have to, I have to just point out Luke. Uh, uh, he came up with no, that's the very last one. No plástico es fantástico. There's a lot of them, no plástico. But it rhymes in Spanish. And, and in Spain, they were very impressed that we have the student that not only is learning Spanish, but he's rhyming in Spanish. So got, uh, I think that's pretty awesome. Um, So anyway, so I guess that, oh, so these are, yeah, these are, these are the bags. It was just a mock-up of the bags before we had them printed. Uh, I'd also like to really thank C for supporting this because it was a, a, an innovative project, but it definitely required some extra funding for the bags and having the, just the mock-up of the, uh, the ink and everything else. So um, I, I could tie it in. I could go on and on. It ties in with ISTE standards. It, it ties in with language standards and other standards, but those are just all in the presentation, which I will, uh, which I will share. This is kind of my theme for this year. Actually, I made it with key Keynote, I learned at another PD uh, workshop how to use um, Keynote to make little digital badges, because I want my students to earn digital badges this year. But Exploramos el Mundo is kind of, so we're going to explore the world this year. So we can do all that, fortunately, with, uh, you know, just with our laptops and, and through the study of language. Um, so anyway, that's it. So I guess we've got the bag. So I'll have maybe the students hand up. We're going to give one to Mr. Eastman, of course. And <laughs> board members will get them. And the students will, they're each going to get two bags to take home. And all my seventh grade students from last year who worked on the project will also get a bag because these are the four, their classmates voted on these logos, the four logos. Um, but there are others which are, were really well done. Thank you. So just thank you to my students for coming. Thank you to the board for supporting us. I think we're really fortunate uh, to have a world language program that starts in the elementary school. And uh, the students are learning the language. And now we just have to really, I think we have to push out these walls and really get them using the language in, in real world situations. And hopefully this is just the start of more and more programs like this. So anyway, thank you very much. Senora Dana, thank you so much. Your, your creativity um, is endless and your passion is, is so inspiring. And this is, you do amazing thank work. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Can we turn this off? Uh, sure. I'll turn
So, so um, now we're moving on to administrative reports from principals. Mr. Eastman. Oh. I wasn't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to catch you just in case. Just grab a bag. I would not do that. Um, I really have um, no administrative report that I've thought of today. Um, I've become, I think later on I'm going to talk about the SEAF grant for the middle school. Um, I'm kind of on for Kathy on that one. Uh, but no, I think right now we've kind of survived the first trimester of school. We're, I think, getting knee deep into the standards and the grading through standards um, and trying to, the slow rollout of howls, um, how grades, I call it howls, but how grades. Um, so I, I feel like we're kind of in the middle of all that and it's, we're in the process of getting ready to survey staff um, for what's worked well, what's not working well, what are roadblocks. Uh, because often until you really try something, you never really know how it, what the pit falls are. So I think right now a lot of our focus is really around the report, common assessments. We're deep enough in now where the assessment happened and then really trying to balance out what formative assessments go in a grade book, which ones don't, and how do we really represent fairly to parents what we're doing. So um, I think that's some of the common work that we're doing right now. And it seems like sports never stop at the middle school. So right now I think it's girls basketball going on. Ping pong is going on every day, I think, in the hallway. Uh, but it's just a, a really kind of a happening, happy place to be, I think, right now. Had our first dance that I got to chaperone. And um, I swear, I think there was 300 glow sticks. And in the first five minutes, one broke. And they make a very big mess. I thought, oh, how's this next two hours possibly going to go? No more broke. So it was perfect. Um, but it's just, it's fun to see middle school kids get to be middle school kids and relax and do some of that stuff. And when you have people like Senior Dana that this is always kind of out there pushing and having high expectations, it makes a huge difference. Uh, and really, we've done our job if we can just support, encourage our teachers to kind of do what they love to do. Uh, and I think she's a great example of that. She, it was funny, she was going to do this presentation and she kept telling me, oh, I've had more kids come up, more want to come and present, more want to come and present. So I think that says a lot about what we do and, and how kids are feeling about it. So my goal would be to get more kids here to present because that's really what we're all about. So thanks. Thank you. Mr. Shug. Um, so I, I wanted to just elaborate a little bit more on the TEDx event and point out a couple people in particular. Um, first, first of all, um, student performers and speakers were a huge part of um, what happened there. And I did want to mention each of them. Alex Hansen um, opened the entire program off. He's a junior. Um, he was playing the piano and he's an unbelievably talented kid. Um, what I didn't realize, he was playing a Herbie Hancock number. What I didn't realize until I happened to come across Mr. Lazat partway through the program was it was based on a Herbie Hancock tune, but the entire nine to ten minutes was improvised. So that was not memorized. It was truly just Alex taking off on a melody and just really going. So that was really cool. Um, second of all, we had, for the first time ever, um, a young lady appearing in what I understand is an 11-pound dress. Is that what it was, Piper? An 11-pound dress, um, wowing us all with her Irish step, step dancing. It was absolutely amazing. Um, she was almost unrecognizable, except for her smile beaming out from, <laughs> beaming out from a very big um, head of hair. Um, so she did a wonderful job. Then Amy, Anna Stevens uh, sang to accompaniment by Harry Baker, um, and they did a fantastic job. And then our student speaker was Rohan Friedman. Um, and Rohan spoke about, um, uh, his talk was based on hunger and ending hunger, and he focused somewhat on his eight-week internship in China this past summer, which was a really neat opportunity that he had. So that was really cool. I also wanted to mention um, that as, shortly after the second break, um, a gentle, gentleman came up to me who was a guest at the TEDx event, and he said that his job is organizing conferences and organizing keynote speaker for business, big businesses and that sort of stuff, and he was blown away by the quality of 
uh, the presentation. He said it rivaled any conference that he's attended. Um, I mean, he was really impressed that students and faculty working together could produce such a really high quality, thought provoking event. I also wanted to mention uh, three other students. Um, one was here in her role as soccer player, that's Riley Dahl, uh, who was one of the MCs, along with Zara Friedman, who was another MC. And then another student who deserves mention was very much a behind the scenes person, but instrumental to everything that happened that day uh, was Zach Wellens. Um, who put together the whole slide deck and was in charge of the videos and everything coming on at the right time and all that sort of thing. And Sarah Lennon, who was a parent and one of the two inspirers of CIF events at, at CAPE, she was very much involved uh, this year. And then staff members Ginger Raspiller, Mark Pendarvis, and Marie Cross um, were part of the team from the very beginning. And then Betsy Nielsen is the overall um, behind the scenes coordinator of everything TEDx. Um, and it just shows incredible dedication over, over the years we've done it. So it's a really neat event. And then I wanted to mention just one other thing unrelated to TEDx. And that was um, high school, this is, this is high school teachers, there's one thing they hate more than anything else. They hate giving up class time for anything, absolutely anything. Um, and one of the things that they're, so anytime we, I take away class time from them for a, whatever it is, whatever it might be, um, you know, there's understandable pushback. And, you know, I'm always pleased when I hear that pushback because that tells me that I've, we've hired some, the right people because we don't want teachers who are willingly going to give up class time for lots of different things. Um, so, so some of you know that on the calendar committee the last couple years, the, the high school teachers are not the most forthcoming to say, let's go Wednesday early release time. Um, so it's a hard sell for them. But this past Wednesday, <coughs> Um, the high school teachers had a great Wednesday early release time and there were six different sessions that high school teachers led for other high school teachers. Um, and it was highly well, it was very well received. Andrew Lupian, who's a math teacher, um, did a brief session about helping students to read graphs and helping teachers to help students to understand how to read graphs and visuals, which are now part, a huge part of every standardized test that kids take. Uh, Roger Rio and Sarah McEwen, who are both math teachers, um, shared some of their experiences this year giving open-ended problem solving for math, um, which is a significant initiative attached to our proficiency education <laughs> efforts. Um, Kevin St. Jar, a social studies teacher, demonstrated a fishbowl technique, which is a way where you put two or three or four students in the middle of the class and the rest of the class circles them up and they have a discussion. And then within the middle, the small middle, and then the outside middle comments and critiques. And it's a really interesting te technique to drive kids towards deeper thinking. Um, Matt Clements, who's an English teacher, shared a strategy he's been using for the last 10 years or so called glossing, um, which is a method of encouraging students to um, for focused revision of their papers based on grammar mistakes. So in other words, you will highlight certain grammar mistakes kids made and then kids have to make those corrections, but instead of writing a whole paper, it's just a way of sort of reinforcing and it's also a technique that could be adapted to a lot of focused revision efforts by teachers. Um, Michael Young, who's a social studies teacher, um, shared a digital clicker tool that he's been using that uses iPads or iPhones um, to essentially check kids' understanding. Um, and then Sean Garrett, who's a science teacher, um, shared a completely non-technological way of checking kids' understanding, which is called whiteboarding, which involves having physical whiteboards and markers and working problems and then sharing them with the whole class. Um, and it's been used by physics teachers for a long time. And um, earlier this week, um, as a result of the English department's exposure to whiteboarding um, from Dr. Garrett, the English department filled out a a purchase order to buy some whiteboards. I don't know exactly what they have in mind for them as well, but it's another way to sort of check for understanding in classes. It was a highly successful early release day, um, and I think a lot of them have been this year. So I, although high school teachers would probably, you, if, if you asked, they wouldn't say this, I think they would say it's more often than not a good use of time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You.
<laughs> Did you want to read out Jason after Dell or? Um, oh, so uh, Jason uh, Mandridis, yeah, was um, he's at a family event tonight. That is Kathy. So yeah, I can I can read it. Everybody has a copy or or whatever you want yeah. to do. Good. Okay. Um, uh, as far as news in special education, uh, Cheryl Joyce, special education teacher at uh, the middle school, and I attended Drummond and Woodson's training on special education eligibility. The presentation was provided by a panel of eight, um, eight individuals that were made up of legal assistants and lawyers. Case law was referenced throughout. It was, uh, it was very valuable and helped kind of reaffirm uh, that we're on the right track at CAPE. During last week's early release, special education case managers were provided time to collaborate with individual ed techs. This is um, in going around and meeting with the ed techs. One of the pieces that they uh, were struggling with is just getting enough time to sit down with the special ed teachers slash case managers in order to collaborate and talk about the students that they're serving. Uh, we have recently contracted with Kristen Rollins, school psychologist. She previously worked in the district, um, and the hope is that she'll help us with psychological assessments as we're trying to keep up with the testing. We also continue to be contracted with Beverly Strock, Dr. Beverly Strock. Um, Beverly has been helping us out, but only can give us a day or two here and there. So uh, we needed additional support. So we have two contracted folks and hopefully that'll help us get through the year. At the state level, uh, this fall, the DOE had proposed a series of alterations to the main special education regulations. As of yesterday, after receiving statewide feedback, all changes were put on hold. Um, amendments to the current IEP have been proposed. Uh, IEP is the document that we use for individual education plans for every student that's in special ed. And uh, those were also put on hold. They were scheduled to go into effect on the 1st of October and now been pushed back to January 1st. Many of the changes that were proposed were essentially focused on main care billing. And currently we're servicing 163 students in special education, 60 at Pond Cove, uh, middle school is 52 and the high school is 51. We have 16 students in referral and we have two students outplaced. Any questions? Okay, that's great, thank, thank you. Thank you, Dale. Do you want me to read it? I, I don't know, I mean, if everybody has a copy, we don't have to read it. And we can yeah. include this in the minutes. Okay. So. okay. Uh, Catherine. Good evening. <laughs> um, uh, ugh, I had something all prepared, and now I just got to get into the mode. Okay. We are five months into the fiscal year, and um, Donna and I met earlier uh, last week to go over the finances, and we've been doing that on a regular basis monthly, and we are actually in good shape. As I said, we're five months into the fiscal year. Um, that is at 41.67%, and our overall budget, we've spent 40.71%, so we're below um, where we would be if we're, everything was on track, which is a good thing. We want to be below. We want to have a little, little money there so that we can carry money over into the new year as it goes along. So I wanted to let you know we're looking, we're looking good. We're looking healthy in the finances. And I wanted to point out one thing on the Interfund 20 handout that I also include, which is this spreadsheet. I wanted you to let you know that I have broken out all the federal grants before you would look at this and, and uh, the, like the Title I grant, the Title II grant, the local entitlement grant were all blunked together, but it was hard to follow where the money flowed, so I broke it out so you could actually, it actually follows directly with the detailed financial report. So now you can see how much money's left in which, which year's award. So I wanted to just let you know about that change. Other than that, we are, as I said, in good shape and the year is going well. You okay? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. So in your packet, <laughs> you have the um, enrollment sheet, and uh, we are uh, enrollments down 20 from last year at this time. 
We have the third meeting of the Facilities Needs Assessment Committee um, on December 5th, and I think Kimberly is going, going to talk about that. <laughs> Later. <laughs> um, I spoke with uh, Peter Esposito this morning, our uh, food services director, and he was talking about the many plans that he has for the high school, and it was just so exciting. Um, so they have already restored bagels, um, and the kids are very excited about that, um, and along with some other uh, favorite snacks, and he said that they are in search of a distributor of Piper's favorite pretzels. <laughs> what are my favorite pretzels? <laughs> no, do that. is there there's pretzels that you like? And so the, this, oh, oh pretzels, and so they're yeah. looking yeah. for somebody. Oh, those pretzels. Yeah, the, they yeah they're looking for somebody that. They got good food back. They got those kettle chips. Well, they're, they're looking for good. they're looking to buy the pretzels that you like. So <laughs> that is coming. I wanted to let you know that. Really better. <laughs> like really good. They had brownies today too. They were delicious. That's the old recipe. Yeah, yeah. it's so, really good. Uh, some of Peter's uh, other plans include a guest chef program, and I hear that there is a plan for Jeff to do some cooking. Okay. Um, the, uh, he's going to be the guest chef, apparently. They're going to have a saute line, and students select meat, uh, the meat, veggie, and sauce they want for their dish, and then um, Jeff and Peter, I guess, are going to uh, cook that up. Um, he's also, Peter's also planning on bringing back the Chef of the Month program, um, where he brings in uh, chefs from various restaurants around. Um, and also uh, restoring the senior lunch program, where they invite senior, uh, senior citizens in once a month for lunch, and the, the students will serve them. Uh, so he's got some great ideas that um, he feels like he's freed up to do now. So I think there's some um, amazing things that are going to happen in the very near future um, at the high school. Uh, we had the planning meeting for the future search visit, visioning process uh, that took place today. So we reviewed uh, the process and uh, the event will be held in March now, March, what did we decide? 15th, 15th and 16th. Um, so we, you'll be hearing more about that and the uh, public will be welcome to participate, although there will be a limit to the number of participants. Um, and there will be a sign up for the process, so more to come about that. Uh, we've been working on cleaning out the files from the lower level storage room at the high school and moving the special education files to the file room at the middle school basement, so that process is going well. The calendar committee had their second meeting on December 6th and the discussion focused on uh, compliance with our state law that the sending districts of the career and technology centers can only have, uh, can have no more than five dissimilar days in their calendars. So we had two days that were in question and they are the, uh, the October parent-teacher conferences. So we have sent out, I believe it went out today, um, a survey to staff about, um, with op two options. Uh, for the, for uh, the parent-teacher conferences. Um, so we, the committee's going to uh, meet again in January uh, to review that data. So, okay. lots going on. Yep, thank you, Donna. Okay, now moving on to new business. Item seven, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve the reappointment of Smita Santi, MD, as the school health advisor. I have a second? I second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item eight, may I have a motion please? I move we formally accept the SEAF grant awarded on November 19th, 2018 for the update of the CEMS staff room in the amount of $10,820. May I have a second? A I second. Go ahead. Who did it? I think Laura did. Okay. Um, any discussion? I would, I would love, this is the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Mm -hmm. Did Troy leave? I think he's, he'll be back later. I think he's on the phone. Wow. I was going to see if he could just talk to it a little bit uh -huh. about what this mm -hmm. entailed and um, it's in here. Maybe someone could send us some pictures. Yeah. If you could see what we here. Just 
but yeah, we'll have to ask what he says. I believe it's about um, redoing the staff room in the middle school. Yeah. Um, adding a sink. There's no sink there at present, and um, you know, just upgrading that for the teachers. So. Okay. If he comes back, you can talk more I just more thought it'd be it. nice to know what yeah. the benefits of this and how, you know, the efforts to improve this space, not that I'm against it, but just to be curious mm -hmm. about what improvements mm -hmm. are being made. Uh -huh. so. And thank you to Steve. Yeah. All those in favor? Yes. All right, moving on to item nine, um, consideration and action to approve the following 2018-19 Administrative Athletic Extracurricular Personnel Nominations. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve Sarah Collins as the Art Club Advisor at Cape Elizabeth High School and Brian McDonald as an Indoor Track Assistant at Cape Elizabeth High School. I have a second. A second. Any discussion? I would just like to say, as always, thank you for to Sarah and Brian for creating these or being leaders of these extracurricular activities so that our students can be more well-rounded and have these extra activities. Yeah. Okay. Well said. All those in favor? Next, um, consideration of the following policies. First reading, no vote is required, but I'm going to ask um, before Elizabeth speaks on them. Troy, w while you stepped out, um, we came upon the um, item number eight, which is the SEAF grant for the, um, and we were just wondering if you had any um, uh, like picturing you could give us, like what, what to expect. We, we did, did. We voted for it. It, it passed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. What did you put in? <laughs> Do you just want to hear about it quickly? Yeah. Okay, so um, it was really a great idea from Kathy. Kathy kind of thought of this and, and put it forward. Um, I don't know if you've been in our teacher's room at the middle school, but it's essentially across from the office, beside the conference room. There's no sink. There's no, obviously, running water in there. Uh, so it has kind of become just this place where nobody uses. Um, so people are relegated to kind of just go eat on their own somewhere, which is not really very much of a good community kind of atmosphere. So the idea was to make that a place where people want to come and be a part of um, and sit and eat and share food, share stories, talk. Uh, inevitably, teachers always talk about kids and, and what's going on and best practices and something going well or something not going well. So really making that more, um, I think right now, I would say that room is in the center of the school, but it's by far, it's a long ways from being the center of the school. Uh, so it's really an, an attempt to make it become that area. I think the high school um, teacher's room was just recently renovated. We're kind of basically following that lead. And Kathy nor I are interior designers, and so I think we're going to have the help of the SEAF people. They were not impressed with my what I had to say about how to do it because it was pretty clear <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, but the need is there. Um, and I think it's really going to look a lot like what the high school has. And I, and I think by the feedback we have that, that it's a used space. Right now it's just a space that sits there. Um, it's really not very professional. It's not very supportive of what we want to be. Um, so that was, so they're, they're going to do it. The move is moving it from, we're just going to switch the conference room with the current teacher's room. Um, the rationale for that is water. Um, the conference room has a joining wall with the men's bathroom. And as luck would have it, just through the little sheetrock wall is the back of all the sinks. So the plumbing will be much easier and, and less expensive. Um, so we're just changing those two rooms around, repainting them, um, putting in some cabinets. Nothing too extravagant. New table, round tables instead of these huge, big desks. Um, and then moving some of the equipment, the technology, like the, the overhead projector, the projector that is mounted overhead um, and on the ceiling and, and putting in that other room so it can be a conference room. So really just moving the two spaces and making them both more functional. That's great. Right? Yeah, thank you. Just make sure you, they take pictures before and after. I can do that. Thank you. I think it'll be a big improvement. Yeah. Thanks. When do you expect the work to be done so, uh, so it's, you can utilize it? Yeah, so we're doing it in conjunction with Perry, so it's kind of mm -hmm. because we want him to do all the work that he can, uh, and it saves money for the whole process. Um, I think he's going to hire out the plumbing, according to him, but I think most everything else, other than the cabinets, which will just be bought and put in, um, I think everything else they're, gonna, they're planning to do. So I'm pushing him for February break, but it might be April break. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Great. Thanks, Joy. 
Okay, so Elizabeth, if you would mind just addressing the yeah. policy. Yeah, so first read um, the, the reason that uh, athletic policy sanctioning of sports is on the agenda tonight is we actually just needed to rename it. It was um, coded improperly. So we recoded it and we actually had a conversation about why we have this policy. It's not a required policy, but it sets down a procedure for when a sport wants to become affiliated with the school, does it want to become a varsity sport, um, or does it want to stay at the club level? And so there, there are steps and very clear uh, process and timelines for how to do that. And so um, with feedback from Jeff Thorak in particular, we wanted to keep this policy. We have had um, new sports added over the years, and, and it was successful because they followed that path. Uh, you know, it's very difficult if you want to start a sport and go straight to the varsity level um, without taking those appropriate steps. So that's what that one's all about. Um, the next one is about image management and um, in particular like the CE logo. We had a request from a business in town that wanted to use in particular the Cape Elizabeth school logo and so we then had kind of a bigger conversation about do we you know do we just kind of let anybody do whatever we want with that do we think it would be appropriate to be on a beer stein or whatever so um, Jeff Thorax actually researching if we are able to trademark that is that what we're looking at hope I want to check the right language um, because a lot of other schools and colleges do have their logos trademarked so he's doing some research on that um, we have bomb threat procedure, but we didn't have a bomb threat policy, and by law we need one on the books, so we are using essentially um, an MSMA bomb threat policy uh, to put in our manual, and we already have procedure that is reviewed and followed and that sort of thing, but the policy really talks more about um, kind of discouraging students in different, uh, around, around, um, it's not like what do you do during a bomb threat, but like what are the consequences of someone making a bomb threat, if that makes any sense. And then um, we reviewed our nepotism policy, which um, we did have a little discussion around because in a small town, it can it's difficult to um, turn away people that want to work here that are related to people who already work here. So we just there's a procedure for that, and we've had that happen where someone came to us and said. You know, so and so is you know wants to work in food services, and they're related to so and so, but there won't be a direct report, and there won't be any conflict. So that just sets out the procedure that yes, there can be um, those sorts of things happening, but the board needs to be aware and kind of sign off on that. So those will be coming back for second read next month, right? and hope we'll have to talk about. There's two more oh, there's two more in the back. Yes, school yeah. board powers and responsibilities. That um, just outlines um, what basically what the board is able to do as a group. And there are other. Um, there's another document that talks about you know how board members have no power unless they're together as a board. So that one is on the books. And then um, the last one we discussed was around private school students and their access to public school co-curricular, interscholastic, and extracurricular activities. And that just kind of reaffirms that students going to private schools have access to our programs only if their school does not offer that sort of thing. So. That's coming to you next month. Thank you. All right. Um, we're moving on to number 11, which involves Elizabeth also. <laughs> Consideration and action to approve the following policies for second reading. I have a motion. So I move we approve the following policies for second reading. JLCC, Communicable Infectious Diseases, EBAA, Chemical Hazards, IHBAL, Grievance Procedures for Persons with Disabilities, ADAA, School System Commitment to Standards for Ethical and Responsible Behavior, and ADC, Use of Tobacco Products and Electronic Nicotine Delivery Systems. May I have a second? A second. Any discussion? No changes were made to these policies as discussed at the last meeting. Okay. All those in favor? 
Thank you. Okay, moving on. Committee reports. Um, po policy is taken care of. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, Paz, Hope, do you have anything to report uh, this month? Okay, thank you. Uh, needs assessment. Kimberly, I put you on the spot there and I forgot to tell you. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm sorry. No problem. No, I, I actually was thinking that I was doing it. I just wasn't thinking I was doing it earlier okay. when Donna was mentioning it. Oh, I was like, oh, sorry, no. it's my fault. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, yes, the needs assessment committee has met um, twice in the last two weeks. Um, we met at the Cape Elizabeth um, middle school um, to tour, uh, we divided into four groups and toured um, various sections. We went into the kitchen and saw um, some of the um, challenges that they face in the kitchen with uh, some varied heights and um, various safety issues. Um, we checked out the stage and the cafetorium, the seating, the, the size of the cafetorium, um, and the challenges. Uh, Steve Price was there to lead us through some of the challenges that the, um, they deal with for the theater program. Um, and then we looked at both entrances um, to, the, to Pond Cove and the middle school um, with safety. Um, in mind and the um, sort of open access um, to both schools that people can gain from the entrances. Um, and we toured the band room, um, which is somewhat undersized and seems to have some heat constraints as well. Um, and I think people felt that that was a very useful meeting. They liked that format. And so we sort of duplicated that. Um, for the next meeting, we went back to the high school and um, saw a variety of areas um, that are, some of them are in need of more significant updates than others. Um, and I think people enjoyed that meeting as well. We hope to get a proposal, I think we were thinking maybe late December, um, and we'll meet again January 9th from 6.30 to 8.30 with the Needs Assessment Committee, which is the public is welcome to attend the meeting. And I think the hope is that the committee will come up with a final recommendation that night about whether we will um, move forward with the Needs Assessment or not. Town Comprehensive Planning Committee, that's me. Um, we had our last meeting last Thursday. Um, after two years of meeting monthly, sometimes bi-monthly, um, and the draft is still is, is up online, so the next step will be um, for a few members of the, the Town Comp Committee to present it to Town Council, and then um, it will be up to Town Council to adopt or, or not, or make changes. So. Um, it's a lot of lot of a uh, lot of work and, and input from a lot of different town um, people, and um, it's never too late to um, weigh in. So I would recommend, and if you do want to weigh in, I would reach out directly to um, probably Maureen O'Mara, the town planner, or um, the new chair of the town council, because I think now the town comp committee is dismantling. Um, and then moving on to tech committee. Now, sir, any reports? Uh, no reports. On December 5th, uh, there was supposed to be a meeting and that was canceled. Uh -huh. And the new meeting has not been announced yet. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, requests for future school board meeting items. Um, I, the, one was mentioned um, at the end of last month's meeting from Elizabeth, and it's something that we talked about briefly, I guess it was last night. Um, and uh, it, it, I don't know when we'll be able to squeeze it in, um, but maybe at like a future workshop. Um, the topic of improving um, technology and uh, technology in terms of uh, the school board, the schools communicating, collaborating, improving our, um, our website, um, our calendar, continuity. Um, it just seems like uh, we, we could have a, we could, I, I don't know, I think it's in need. So I, I don't know what it would take, but I think it's definitely worth a discussion. Okay, so upcoming meetings. Um, a lot of them were mentioned. Um, 
The very next one is not a meeting, but I have the, um, I feel I should mention it. It is on um, Monday, uh, Monday, December 17th, it is a school board and an administration gathering. Um, we had one last year, and we're gonna try to make this a, an annual event, um, but it's important to say that this is a, um, a uh, non-business um, related gathering. No business will be discussed. It's simply to celebrate. Um, and uh, no, no, no school funds will be used. It's all, you know. <laughs> And then, um, so just so you know, it's out there. That's what it is. It's totally um, just a social gathering. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, then that's Monday. And then the next night, we have our second joint um, meeting with the town council to have our second uh, discussion about improving the budget process. This one will also be at the fire station, but will not be um, facilitated. Um, by Craig Freshly, so it will probably, I imagine, between Donna and Matt Sturgis. Um, and then policy committees meeting, um, the next one is January 3rd at 3 p.m., Jordan Conference Room. Um, that may or may not change, depending with our new uh, policy chair, but for now, we'll, we'll keep to that. You guys will might decide other dates and times. I think that date's firm. For firm, now. okay, all right, good. Um, and then the Needs Assessment Committee meeting, as Kimberly said, our last one of the committee as it stands right now is Wednesday, January 9th, um, 6.30 p.m. And it says location to be determined, um, but I believe it's going to be at the high school. Um, and lastly, it's not an upcoming meeting. I just want to say welcome very much to Laura Danino. We're so glad to have you on board. Thank you. You're a great asset. And then lastly, may I have a motion to adjourn? I'd like to get that to the new member. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Great. Any seconds? Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Ooh, record. I know. This, this is, is awesome. Really wow. Don't get used to it, Laura. This is. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs>